This is World Ducati Week 2022. It's been a four year break because of, you know what, but it's great to be back at the Mazzano World Circuit for a festival of all things Ducati and Red. So what goes on at World Ducati? Well, on one hand, it's obviously a big marketing thing. It's a big, this is all our new models. Ducati actually shows every year at World Ducati Week a brand new model to the attendees of the show before anyone else sees it. This year it's a new scrambler. But as well as that, it's about a bit of a community thing. It's about getting all the riders and owners of Ducati from all over the world together and an excuse for a massive party. There are stunt shows. They've got champions, past and present. They've got a race of the champions this year where they've put all their current top flight MotoGP and Superbike and Supersport riders on an identical bike and sent them out to race. Brilliant. You've of course got action around the paddock. You've got new bikes to see. You've got talks, you've got tech speeches. You've got presentations on various things about Multistrada, Scramblers, Desert X, just everything you can imagine. And absolute highlight activities. The big Ducatisti ride out, which is where all these loonies get together for a huge descent on the city of Rimini and the beachfront. There's a big scrambler party and a big barbecue as well. It's an event built for Ducati people, built to put a smile on your face, particularly if you like red bikes. One of the highlights of World Ducati Week every year is that they always show a new model. We've seen the first Diavel here, we saw the first of the Scramblers, and this year it's going to be an update to the pretty iconic Scrambler range. Now, you're not allowed to film in there, you're not allowed to photo in there. I've even got a hand in my silly sunglasses in case I've got a camera in them, but we're going to get a chance to have a look at it and find out some of the features that the new Scrambler range is going to have, and it will be released in 2023. Let's go check it out. I tell you what, it's good. It's not, it's not a complete revolution of the bike. Let's not forget, Ducati has spent the last seven years since the Scrambler came out, working really hard to, to make this brand, this image, this kind of cult thing around their Scrambler models. So they're not gonna take all that and throw it away and start again. The new generation Scrambler is a sleeker, more refined, I'm gonna say better finished version of the current styling. There are loads of changes, but if you quickly glanced at it, you probably wouldn't notice all of them. A few really cool features. One, it's now got clip-on panels over the tank and on the tail and front end. So the panels are designed to replace the color scheme really, really easy. So if you decide you don't like the color of your bike, you go on the accessory website, order a different color, and put all the panels on your own bike. Really like that, really nice feature for a bike that's designed for customization. One of the other things they've done, they've added proper ABS with cornering ABS, ride by wire with two riding modes to give the bike a little bit more of a easy feel for the newer riders coming onto them. They have assured me that the ABS will have a mode where you can turn the rear wheel ABS off because let's face it, it's a really good bike for doing skids and we don't want to lose that. Finally, important to note, same horsepower but five kilos less. They've trimmed weight out of the chassis and the engine. So they have done a full rework and redesign of the bike. The proof in this stuff is always in the riding so can't say whether it's amazing or not yet. We're gonna have to take it somewhere and send it down a big flight of stairs with a smile on our face, and then I'll tell you if I like it or not. Obviously, we're spoiled brats, so 20 minutes on track is a long way, long way to come to Italy for that. But the whole ethos with Ducati Week is it's about the riders. It's not so much about showing off the factory. It's about the people that come here and the Ducatisti, as they call them. This is the DRE riding experience. So this is a Panigale V4S. Sign your name on a list, and they let you out on track on it. We've had some action over the last few days. It's about 40 degrees on track. There's a huge mix of riders here. I'm just excited to go out and ride with a bunch of other people on a really, really cool track in Italy. What could be better than that?
Oh, it's on a world circuit. Yes. This is a properly incredible track. If only for the back section, which we'll get to in a minute. It's been a decade since I last rode here. That was with Bike World at World Ducati Week. It's amazing. Tracks like this, you actually really get a chance to open up a 200 horsepower bike. Which is pretty cool. friend of mine from a Belgian magazine. <laughs> Always good to have a little chase with people on track. Shoulder check, classic road rider move. We'll forgive him that. I'm all for motorbike shows, I think they're a good idea, but they're always better if you can get out on a bike, turn the throttle and get sweaty. <laughs> now, look, I've managed to schnapple myself a Ducati Scrambler. This is for my favourite bit of World Ducati Week, and it is what they call the Ducatisti Parade. It's basically a parade of two slow laps of the Mazzano World Circuit, and then a parade all through the town, right down to the coast to a big party at the end. The police close all the roads, block all the junctions off, and thousands and thousands of bikes. If you turn up to the event, come and join in the parade and, and that's all the qualifications you need. It's no better celebration of being a part of a brand. You know, brands always talk about, oh, being our family and all, all this nonsense, but I feel like it's pretty genuine here. There are hundreds and thousands of Ducatis. Everyone on them is really passionate about Ducatis. They, they love their bike. They've bought the t-shirt, the bikini, the pants, the socks, the I'm sure they do Ducati condoms, they'd buy them too. They Honestly, they're, they're fully into it, and it's a big family celebration of being a Ducati owner. And to pretend that I am and be part of that is really exciting. And if nothing else, it's just hundreds and thousands of bikes being paraded around, and it's cool to be a part of. Yeah, words can't really justify it. Check it out. Imagine if you could take all of the best riders in the world, put them all on identical bikes, and then make them race. How good would that be? Now, obviously Ducati can't convince all the Honda riders to come and play here, but what they have done, if we look down this line, you've got Bagnaia, Miller, Bastianini, Zarco, Jorge Martin, Luca Marini, all the way through the superbike riders, Bautista's down there. All of the top flight Ducati racers from MotoGP and World Superbikes all on identical Panigales, and they're gonna have a race. That, that's properly exciting. I say identical bikes, they've actually all been painted up in the team's racing colors. They look stunning. I have to say, Bastianini and, and Antonio's bikes with the sort of flat mauve color looks, in the flesh, incredible. I'm always interested to see how identical they are, because let's face it, these guys are racers, these teams are race teams, 
I'm sure there's going to have been an, at least an attempt for some uh, tomfoolery underneath the plastics, but it's time to go and see the race and we'll see what happens and see whether they do a tech inspection afterwards. <laughs> And this is, it's got to be my favourite, no, it's my second favourite bit of World Ducati Week. My favourite bit is the parade with all the bikes and the, the revving and the beeping. That's, that's chaos and I love it. My second favourite bit is wandering around and looking at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Ducatis from all eras, all conditions, all sorts of bikes and modifications. It's just a complete mismatch of styles and tastes and types of bike and I could wander around here, I have, I've wandered around here all day picking out things to look at, looking at what people have done because they thought it looked good to their bike and my favourite bit is looking at the ones that are absolutely knackered. Beautiful 998s and 748s that are hammered. In fact, I've just spotted there's a Tanagali on slicks and he's ridden here on the road. <laughs> it's brilliant, it's absolutely bonkers. Now one of my all-time favourite motorcycles and definitely one of my favourite Ducatis is the 1199 Super Leggera. It looks like a posh Panigale, but it's got a magnesium frame, it's got hand machine components, it is a phenomenally well-crafted bit of kit and a super exquisite thing. And there's two. Bonkers. Sorry. Come on, it wouldn't be World Ducati Week without Chris wearing some stupid sunglasses. Can you have a blue Ducati? Of course you can. Is it right? No one knows, but I think it looks awesome. It certainly stands out. It has been said that old Valentino wasn't the success at Ducati that everyone hoped he'd be, but clearly some people still miss him. Look at that, matching Rossi bikes, matching Rossi helmets. Love it. It's not very often you see one of these, and it's really, really rare that you see one in the wild being ridden on the road. We just spotted this Desmo RR, but more than that, check out the tyres on it. They're absolutely shredded. Oh, got distracted by an 848. Nice. So many bikes everywhere you turn. Heaven. There are so many multistradas here, and you see loads of them turning up here, couples, two up on them, loads of them in town, every restaurant. It's, it feels like people are using them as their transport. They're not having them as a weekend toy. They're not having to go touring this summer on. They're just using them to get around. It's always nice to ride motorbikes in the, in the good weather, for sure, but in the cities, certainly down this coastal area we've been in, there's nowhere to park a car, so it makes sense. Love it. True move to Italy, Al. I gotta admit, the Ducati Monster's a bike that's always, I don't know, never really hit a chord with me. I, I, I like them, I enjoy riding them, but it's never a bike that I've lusted after. But out here, in this kind of flat in between little cities, cruising down the coast, farting about town type territory, you know what, it's, it feels like the perfect bike out here and there's a squillion of the things all over the place. Being an old Luddite, I think the old 900 air-cooled ones, I, I'm really into them. Rattly clutches, proper old air-cooled Ducati style. But yeah, right through to the modern ones, they're everywhere in every cafe. And it feels like the scrambler's trying to take over from that as that bloke driving past beeping it <laughs> illustrated nicely. But yeah, I think the monster will always have a special place in Ducati people's heart. And in Italy, it makes sense here. Look at that. M900 fan, I'm going to find you in the UK, buy you a pint, because you're a flipping hero. Monster 900, sidecar built on, controls in the sidecar. Hell yeah. Now this, this is exciting. We're going to get a go on the 
what they're calling the Motor X2. So this is the two-seater MotoGP bike that Randy Mammel has been doing for years ago. It's a, a long-standing thing. Ducati was saying they've actually put around 6,000 people in total on the backs of these bikes, not at the same time. And they've really kind of polished the process, they've refined what the bikes are, what they do. The actual tech specs of the bike are super interesting, so I just want to talk you through some of the, the features and the changes on the two-seater bike. So first up, it's a GP12 Ducati, so it's the carbon frame MotoGP bike with the MotoGP engine. It's not some dressed up Panigale, this is a legitimate, proper MotoGP bike. In terms of the engine, they've taken 1800 RPM off the, off the rev limit at the top. The main reason being that when you dump a pillion on the back of it, you can't use any more power. It's about 250 brake, but with a pillion passenger sat right far back on the bike, there's only, we're saying up to fifth gear, you still can't use full, full throttle because there's, the bike's got so much power anyway, it just wants to wheelie. The back end itself, up to the sort of back of the rider seat is the standard subframe, and then they've got a carbon monocoque bonded to that and bolted, which supports the pillion's weight and supports the rear foot pegs and gives you that kind of structure to work with. Now the key thing, as anyone who's been a pillion on anything knows, is where to hold on. The tank grips there give you a little basis to actually lean and brace, mainly on the braking, which is where the biggest forces are. To achieve that, the fuel tank is a CNC machine from solid tank. It's a one-piece tank, big block of aluminium, and they machine it all out to give the cutouts for the grips and to give it enough strength for the, the forces and the loading that are going through those handlebar grips, tank bar grips, if you like. So that's like a proper exquisite bit of kit. Other changes, they were saying because the rider and the pillion have the weight so far back, you can't open the throttle as hard, but you can brake harder in a way even harder than a MotoGP rider can brake because they're limited by the bike trying to stop it. With that in mind, the bike has a steel steerer tube rather than an alloy one because they're generating up to 1.7 G under braking, so the forces are really, really strong. So that is a massive change to keep the bike strong and stop the bike snapping in half under frankly ridiculous braking forces. And in terms of weight, it weighs less than the actual MotoGP bike too. Remember, this doesn't have to pass any tech inspection or rules, so this is about 140 kilos. 140 kilos, 250 brake horsepower. It's insane. I'm kind of baffled by it. I want to pull it apart and poke holes in it, but it's a properly special thing. It's something they've developed over the years to make it better and better. And they've got a bit of a riding technique. You have to keep your hips still and move your body with the rider. And yeah, they're saying that they can commit and go, full ham on the track if that's what you want. That's what we want. Insane, just under the Power GP pillion lap. Oh, <laughs> as, as they said before, the braking forces are phenomenal. But for me, the highlight and always the highlight of Mizano, the, the flat out kink on the back straight. How fast he rode that with a pillion, slapped the bike on its side, and then pinned the throttle out of there right onto the curves. Oh. <laughs> that is a properly epic experience. <laughs> Awesome. We are we are done. We have had a hell of a time at World Ducati Week. The World Ducati Week thing is still entertaining because it's three days, but 
it has been a really, really good year. The, the takeaway for me always from this event, it's the third one I've been to now, Ducati, lovely, new bikes, lovely MotoGP teams, all that stuff, very, very nice, great. But it's the celebration and the people and the, the fans and the, the whole idea of just taking over a track and a town for, for three days for a big motorcycle party and meeting loads of people. I've tried to get out and talk to as many other people from not just sort of dealers and other journalists, but like riders and people who've turned up, people from Germany who've ridden here on their bikes, people from loads of bikes from England here, loads of bikes from all countries, Belgium, France, I can't even remember any European countries now, but loads of people from loads of different places. Americans, Japanese, it, it's a, a global kind of gathering for people who like Ducatis and whether you're a Ducati person or not, it's an incredible thing to see this celebration of these bikes from all over the globe. I love it and I think, you know, more than the marketing side of the Ducati thing and the, the swank and the the pomp and circumstance of all the MotoGP teams. Like, that, that's lovely and it's cool to see that and it's cool to see those guys outside of a race paddock, but it's just a great place to be if you like motorbikes. And I like motorbikes a lot. I'll be back.